In the first Jericho Forum identity video, we learnt about people or entities having core identity and how we all operate with a series of personas that are under our control using the principle of primacy. Now we are going to look at how these principles translate into the digital age and how our modern Tom Baker uses a trusted identity. We call the digital representation of the core identity a core identifier, a unique digital key that identifies Tom as Tom. The principle of primacy is fundamental here. Tom is connected to his core identifier so that only he can use it. Because of this binding, only Tom is able to use his core identifier to create and manage his various personas. This binding between Tom and his core identifier must be enduring and unchangeable in order to place trust in the personas that Tom creates within the identity ecosystem. We call this immutable binding, and while the identity ecosystem has no need to know who is allocated a core identifier, it must have absolute trust in the binding process and that it is truly immutable. Once Tom has his core identifier, he can use it to create personas and also link it to any existing personas, such as his government tax persona or a credit card persona. Creating a persona will generate another identifier, a persona identifier, which may be derived directly from Tom's core identifier or from another of Tom's existing personas. In deriving a new persona from an existing one, Tom can choose which identifier attributes to inherit from that persona, which is privacy enhancing as it limits attribute exposure. Tom's personas need to be created with a one-way trust, ensuring that the consumer of a persona, or even the persona provider, is never able to go back up Tom's identity tree to derive Tom's core identifier and thus his core identity. The trust in a persona comes from three sources. First, from the immutable linking of Tom to his core identifier. Second, from the endorsement of the persona by the issuing organization. And finally, by the validation and binding of attributes to that persona by their authoritative source. So if Tom becomes a government employee, he takes his core identifier, which was issued by an organization trusted and approved by the government, and uses it to create his government employee persona. One of the attributes of this employee persona may be the level of his government security clearance. So in summary, what have we learned about personas? First, persona identifiers can be created by joining two identifiers, for example, a core identifier and an organizational identifier. Second, there can be as many or as few levels in an identity tree as required. Third, personas are derived from either another persona identifier or a core identifier, together with the related attributes using one-way trust to ensure privacy. And finally, the trust in a persona is the combination of the trust in the relationship to the core identity, the organization identity, and the attribute provider, ranging from high trust all the way to no trust in, for example, the case of a self-asserted persona. In the next video tutorial, we will see how trust and persona interact to provide a privacy-enhanced identity ecosystem.